a national conversation on race. How many times have you heard that phrase? Can I be really honest here? The truth is we're not having a national conversation on race. We're having two very different conversations and there's barely any overlap. Tell me if you agree with me about this. There is a conversation, mainly among whites, that mostly tiptoes around race and sometimes denies race as a factor. Then there's a totally separate conversation, mainly among people of color, that argues many white people just don't get it, just don't or can't or won't understand the pervasive, corrosive, devastating effects of racial bias. And these conversations, they happen through the media. So I'm tempted to call this white news, black news, instead of our usual segment, red news, blue news. Because one of the reasons why we're having two different conversations is that we're hearing, we're hearing two different stories. One story is very specific. It's about Michael Brown and Darren Wilson. But the other story is about an epidemic of police violence. This story, this is the one that many African Americans have absorbed through a mix of mainstream and social media. This is a picture that is viral online. It's of dozens of men, dozens of unarmed men killed by police. Dozens of Michael Browns. And there are unarmed women as well. Now many whites don't know all their names. I don't know all their names. Many African Americans do know their names. So two different conversations based on two different narratives. Now to better understand how and why this is the way it is, let me bring in two media entrepreneurs. Elon James White, who founded the web series This Week in Blackness, and Crystal Wright, who, per, who created the blog Conservative Black Chick. Elon, Crystal, thanks both for being here. Thanks, thanks for Brian. Me. Elon, do you think I'm right about that, that there's simply a different story being talked about in the African-American oriented media and on social media? Uh, absolutely. Um, the big thing here is that we've been dealing with this for generations. Uh, this is not the first time something like this has happened. It probably won't be the last time it's something like this has happened. I mean, we are seeing various people being shot unarmed even now since the Mike Brown shooting. And so the conversation for us is about the fact that this is something that needs to be dealt with on a different level. We can't sit here and wait and continue for, to ask, please treat us like human beings. And yet somehow when people want to look at this, they want to take out all of the history around it, all of the, uh, the uh, obvious bias that's been shown. And they just want to look at it from a, a very a stark and cold way. And you can't do that in this situation. Crystal, what is your take on this? Well, I think what's interesting is that that for some reason the media, and Brian, I think you did this a little bit yourself, you're, you're lumping all black people in one camp and all white people. I'm black, Elon is black, and I disagree with Elon. I have a different perspective on what happened to Michael Brown and how Officer Wilson behaved. And I think that's part of the problem why Americans can't talk honestly about race is because mm. as a black person, I'm supposed to think like Elon. And I don't. And I think the real issue is you did bring up an important point. White Americans feel afraid to talk about race because they feel like if they talk honestly and share an opinion, they're going to be marginalized. They're going to be called all sorts of heinous names. And I think you're right again, Brian, that we're talking at each other because white people are supposed to think a certain way. Black people are supposed to think another way. And we can't have an honest dialogue. We have hate hurling at us. I will say this. I think the real epidemic is not police violence against black men. The real epidemic is young black men killing other young black men. And we no, know no, from the violence, no. if you, no, you're going to let me finish, Elon. No, ma'am, you're going to let me finish because I was respectful of you, Elon, and I will stop in a moment. The Violence Policy Center, Brian, said that the biggest epidemic facing black men, and they, they called it an epidemic, is the black homicides that are being committed against black men, predominantly by other black men. 17 black men are killed each day in this country. And there's no outrage, there's no Al Sharpton talking about why this is happening. Michael Brown made very bad decisions. He did not deserve to have his life cut short at 18. He robbed a convenience store, and then he went on the streets and tried to be confrontational with a police officer. So I think what we need to be talking about is how do we restore trust I do not believe white well, let's cops hear from are waking Elon up on, every yeah. morning. Wait, let me just finish real quick. I'm You've been wrap talking up in for a minute, ma'am. You, you don't call me ma'am, Elon. You were talking longer than me. Uh, white uh, police officers are not waking up. Let me try to pause for a moment. Let me hear up. Elon's point specifically about this black but, on black violence. Right, but, but let me just finish. White police wow. officers are not waking up each morning and saying that they want to go out and kill young black men. Elon, do you want to go ahead? Yes, thank you, sir. Um, 
so first of all, the black on black crime thing, for, uh, Crystal is completely and totally wrong on this because one, this conversation has been happening in, within the black community for generations. Like, like if you go to any uh, black community or uh, the black church, uh, there people are having this very conversation around uh, violence within the community. And so, in all honesty, that's really a way to deflect from the issue here. And let's be let's be real, real here, okay? The fact is, when a cop kills a young black man unarmed, it's a bit different than violence happening within the neighborhood. And to pretend that it's anything else is disingenuous at best. And so, when you talk about this, when you talk about oh, black on black crime, there's black on black crime is in similar rates as white on white crime. This is a a false narrative that people push in order to derail the conversation around our community still being gunned down by the police. Now, when a police officer who is supposed to protect the community, who's supposed to protect the people in that space, kills an unarmed man, it's a different thing than, than gang violence or something like that, because this person has been sworn in to specifically protect the community. And when they don't, and when they can't, and when we're still sitting here afraid of state violence, and then in the end, they're going to be uh, acquitted of that. So that means that when you shoot down our young people, that means you get to go walk free and you get to walk away. That's ridiculous, and that's not something that should be tolerated in any shape or form or fashion. And yes, me, we, uh, me, me and Crystal definitely disagree on this, and it's not because uh, she's supposed to think like me. It's because she's wrong. Well, let me take you in one other direction yeah, well, because I do want to point out some of the conspiratorial thinking. I mentioned in the last block the misinformation about ABC not actually paying for the Darren Wilson interview. Let me put up uh, one of what was too many ugly racist memes on social media this week. This is one that I saw on Facebook. I'm going to read it to you. A shoe store got looted in Ferguson last night. Everything was taken except the work boots. The work boots haven't been touched. A couple of things about that. Right. A, it's obviously racist and awful. Number two, the picture is obviously not from Ferguson. Why is it, uh, and I want to hear from both of you briefly on this, why is it these kinds of memes, these kind of misinformation memes, have spread so virally online the past week? Well, the fact is that people are, it, social media is social media, and there's going to be uh, issues like that. There's going to be uh, a lot of misinformation around it, like you said, uh, around the idea of even uh, Officer Wilson being paid. That's just part of what happens on social media. E emotions are very high at the moment, and they're going, and you're going to see things like that and it's problematic, and w we would hope that more folks would stop and take a moment to look and see if this is even true. Because, like, when you I mean, say it, like you said... That I think we can agree seen. with, yeah, right, I Crystal? Think, yeah. yeah, I think, look, social media has a way of fueling people's anger behind computers where they can hide behind animosity and anonymity, right? But I, I think what's really troublesome to me about the whole narrative is, is your earlier guest talked about when the, the camera lens is in the moment, I think people get riled up and they see these images of rioters, the looting that went on. Let's not forget, guys, 60 businesses are now not able to operate in Ferguson and provide jobs to employees. You have businesses that were either completely burned down or destroyed to the point that it's going to take months to rebuild. I don't I, think I'm that shows have respect for a black neighborhood. And I also, right. well, Brian, and I also want to say well, but that I wanna, I'm I want to focus wrong. on the media, and that's why I've got a role right. in this. Right, yeah. But Crystal, but I'm just Elon, saying, I'm I appreciate not wrong. you both being yeah. here. I, I do appreciate it. And Thanks. I know the debate's going to keep going online.